All right, let's see how our joints, see how our work is. Definitely a tight one. Pretty good start there. Let me bring you in here. I'll show you what I'm looking for. You can really see the the two colors between the two woods there. This being the white fur and the dug fur. But uh, this is good. This is what I'm looking for. This is why it's so important when I originally in the previous videos to always pull your dimensions off of one side because all these dimensions are pulled off the tops on both boards and you can see this is where it really comes home to roost right here had I pulled dimensions off of this side because these timbers are are not exact because I've cut them with the chainsaw mill uh, I'd have a step here and have a problem this is where my floor sits so this needs to be flat what happens down under here I don't care and, I, and mo more times than not th these timbers are going to be just they're going to vary a little bit it's just kind of the way it is so this is really good. This is what I'm looking for. That's my main concern right here. I'm a little, maybe a 32nd sticking out there, which tells me that I need to come in, take a little more material out of here, and I can see right there I've got about a 16th. So this shoulder's got to come back, which I'm not surprised. You can see my pencil mark right there. I stay shy of, of I don't, I don't to do all my notching clear to my dimensions. Uh, so I can have a little bit to play with when I fit, but I'm real happy with that and a couple minutes of work here and this will be just perfect. So let's go over to the other side and see if we're as lucky. So the tools I'm using today for the fitting of the joints is my favorite tool, the one I, I, like, I like the best, it has the best weight and balance and feel, is my Robert Sorby inch and a half chisel. Uh, I was asked in a previous video why I have multiple chisels and, and usually it's because of the two different widths. I have an inch and a half which I like and then I have a two inch also. So that's the reason and these are really nice chisels. They're made by uh, in the UK by the Robert Sorby company and top, top notch. Fine, fine tools. And then I'll be using a, a dead blow hammer. This is the biggest one, I could, a four, what is it, a four pounder? I just get these at Harbor Freight. They hold up really good, lifetime guarantee, and I don't use them that often, so uh, this is uh, what I use for uh, my persuader. I like this because it doesn't mar the wood. It's got a big flat surface, and it's shot filled so it doesn't bounce on you, and it's ideal for beating these timbers together. And then my uh, slick, which is a big chisel. Um, I think, I mean, it's a three, two and a half. I think this is three inches. This is a three or maybe three and a half inches. Uh, this was uh, given to me by my neighbor, Henry. Some of you from the old channel remember him. This was his father's. He was a timber framer. This was made in 1837. And I had it uh, all reprofiled and it's a beautiful, beautiful tool. You can see here the laminated steel on the grind, a hard, high carbon steel on the cutting edge, and then a softer steel 
melded on the top uh, for strength and it's a beautiful tool and it is razor sharp and then my fox pounder which have not hold up, held up very well this is the second one that I've bought and the I've pounded them to death and the handles start coming apart. I'm actually, this whole handle came out and I glued it and the back's coming off so I just ordered a new one. But they, they last for, I guess you probably go through one of these per job, but they're only like 20, 24 bucks so it's not too bad. But those are the tools I use, I'm using today. I'll, this is a, sitting a little bit low, so I'll shim this up. I want these two tops to be exactly the same, and then I can look and see what material needs to be moved, re removed. The tops look great. The shoulders here are pretty close. The bottom shoulder looks really good. What I'm looking for here is gaps. If you can imagine a piece of paper that can slide through there, you can see that that needs to go up a little bit. This 100 degree, degree weather we've had is really helping to dry this stuff out pretty quickly. Try that. Just remember, you can always take away, but you can never add back. It's not worth cutting a corner to save a couple minutes and ruining something that you've got hours and hours of work into. Okay, we're about halfway there. But the slick is nice, and you often use this for finish work because it's so broad. It's kind of like a big wide plane, and it, what it does is it knocks down the high spots and gives you a nice uniform edge. And this needs to be razor sharp. Because it's so broad, it takes a lot of effort to use, and if it's not sharp, it's not very effective. Look at that, that's, that's the definition of a sharp tool right there, when you can just shave off sections. There, a little high spot.
All right. Chisel sharp, it cut my hand there. Definitely putting my blood into the job. Okay, so let's take a closer look here. This is just the initial fit. What I'm looking for right here is, is a nice flush fit right there, which is definitely acceptable. And then right here, you can see I'm a little light on the shoulders. I always am, it's kind of the way I do it. I hate to go too far and have a big gap here. Now, even though this is not going to show, I know it's there and I want it to be I want it to be right. So you can see right here this overhangs a little bit. Right there the shoulder's pretty close. So some gap there. So you can see I need to take this out a little bit right there and that will bring that over. That'll be nice and flush and the same here. So overall it's actually a really good start. Both sides look pretty good and uh, really got some good momentum now. So Back to work.